Today I thought I'd show you something a little bit different. Um, technically, this is episode 55 of the Slow Crafting Podcast, uh, but I'm going to show you a project from beginning to end today. Um, I decided to make a woven scarf for my mum for a Christmas present. So I, uh, well, this video will walk you through the process of me making that scarf. Now, I started with uh, 500 grams of some Aran Nep uh, four ply or fingering weight yarn from Woolly Knits and um, it's a, a cream coloured wool, you'll see in a minute, it's cream coloured wool with um, sort of navy and brown flecks of little lumpy neppy bits in it, um, well it was when it started, um, so I talk you through how I dyed it and uh, then the weaving process for it and then show you the finished products at the end okay here we go Okay, so yesterday I got all the wool skeined up um, into smaller skeins. There's about 200 metres per skein there, and I think there's six of them. So all in all, I've got 1,200 um, metres of yarn. I don't think I'm going to need all of it, but um, I'm going to dye it all up and then any leftovers I can possibly make something for myself. Right, so I'm going to dye it this morning. So I've got a sink that's got water and... Uh, distilled malt vinegar or white vinegar in um, it's four parts water to one part vinegar and I'm going to unskin these bad boys um, one handed <laughs> uh, and lay them in the water and leave them to soak for probably about 20 minutes half an hour while I go and have a cup of coffee Hopefully there's enough water in for um, all these skeins because I've only got one bottle of vinegar. If not, I shall be having to use brown malt vinegar and hope it doesn't stain the wool. Right, on to the next stage. Wow, my plan for leaving the um, wool to soak for um, half an hour or so went slightly awry. So it's now been soaking for about four hours, but that that shouldn't do it any harm. In the meantime, I have mixed up some um, blue dyes. Now I'm using these Wilton's food colouring colours, um, the gels, and I've got one in royal blue and one in whoop, teal or turquoise. Um, now these I have got specifically for dyeing so I have no problem with sticking paintbrushes and things in them in a minute to do extra things. Um, now the reason I'm using food colouring is uh, because I have a very laissez faire attitude to dyeing yarn and really it's probably not safe for me to be using the acid dyes because I wouldn't take enough sensible precautions whereas the food colouring is obviously food safe so uh, I can use my ordinary kitchen equipment and ordinary microwave without having to worry about poisoning myself or the children. Right now unfortunately the bowl that I've got and the microwave that I've got will only fit one yarn, uh, one skein of yarn at a time which could be an interesting challenge um, and it's going to be a long process because once I have um, put the dye onto the yarn, um, I'll probably take a separate picture because I can't film that one handed. Once I put the dye onto the yarn, I've then got to one skein at a time, put it in the bowl, put it in the microwave on full power for three minutes, um, leave it when it sort of finishes its timer, leave it in the 
microwave for five minutes oh look blue hands with the door closed so it can just steam itself silly and then put it on high power again for another three minutes um just put that in there now i'm going for a very variegated um splotchy speckled yarn so we shall see what we come out with hopefully because i plan to weave with it um it'll come out with a really interesting pattern once the looms warped up and i'm then working the weft across so hopefully it should come up with some interesting um patterns where the different colors interact between the weft and the warp we shall see so yes i'll get on and do that um and i'll probably add in some other commentary as and when right so this is the first skein of yarn once i've put the dye on so i've poured some watered down uh, royal blue and turquoise pretty much just all over it but you can see there's still some white spots where there's no dye now it looks quite dark at the minute but i'm pretty sure based on the experience from last time that it will be a lot paler when it's finished um so it won't all set some of it will rinse off now i've also put some darker patches of more intense turquoise and blue that i just dabbed on with a paintbrush so you can see my kombucha in the background if you're wondering what that manky looking thing in a jar is it's my kombucha um so we'll see how this sets um like i say it should be three minutes on five minute rest three minutes on in the microwave and you can tell if it's finished because the liquid that's left in the bottom at the minute you can see it's blue um, but it should be clear once the dye is set so I've just got dye all over my hands they are absolutely bright blue at the minute um, but yes I'll get that in my microwave and uh, fingers crossed okay so this is the wool that I dyed yesterday um, you can see some have slightly more white in than others but uh, this is a lesson in why I do not dye yarn for a living and they're not quite consistent enough for um, <laughs> commercial purposes but for uh, personal projects they'll be fine so it's come out a bit darker than I was planning and slightly more turquoise I was hoping for more of a more of the royal blue to come through but I like it nevertheless so just need to warp up the loom now right I'm just getting ready to uh, warp the loom now and uh, then we can start weaving um, so I'm using the Ashford 16 inch samplet loom which is a riddle rigid heddle loom and um, I'm using a 12.5 dent reed um, which isn't ideal given that the yarn I'm using is a four ply. I think this is better suited to a lace weight, but the only um, reads I have are 12.5 or 7.5. I maybe one that's a five. Um, so for the four ply, well, ideally I probably should be using a 10, 10 dent read, but this'll do. It'll just be nice tight weave on it. Um, yeah, I'll get it set up and start warping.
Right, so I've finally finished warping it. Um, I've only warped about 12 inches wide. Um, I find for me, if I warp the full 16 inches, I'm not not good enough <laughs> weaving to get the selvages to remain tight um, when I'm winding it on. So I think 12 inches wide is going to be plenty wide. And it's ooh, all the way over there. So it's uh, just over two and a half metres long, which should give enough length in the scarf to be able to wrap it round um, twice and have a bit of a, a dangle or to fold it in half and pass it through the loop. And it's looking quite nice. Get the odd flashes of colour here and there. Some of the darker patches that um, were really quite obvious in the skin seem to have balanced out better um, so I'm wondering if I'm it, it's just got to be a, a really subtle effect or whether once we get the warp the weft in as well whether that's going to make the dark colours pop again so um, like I say it's 12 inches wide just over two and a half meters long and I have used um, just under 400 meters of uh, yarn so that was about two of the balls that I uh, dyed the other day. So I've still got four left to weave with, so I shouldn't actually need that many. Right, I need to get it set up to weave properly. So I need to um, get it threaded through the... Uh, so at the minute it's just threaded through the in between the gaps, in between the reeds. So I need to get it through the gap and then through the eye in the reed as well. Because at the moment I've got two through the gap. Okay, so that's my next task. Uh, I can't remember if I said, but it's taken me about an hour to get this far. Partly <laughs> because I started and uh, kept getting interrupted. Partly because I had a couple of disasters which involved the loom falling off the chair because I'd not secured it properly with the bolt underneath and partly because small children kept coming and <laughs> hassling me but it's done now and uh, on to the next phase. Right, so that's the loom warped and the shuttles wound with yarn. Um, so I'm just going to put a few rows of scrap yarn in first and then I'll be able to start weaving. Um, I'm just going to do a plain tabby weave with the uh, main yarn and basically just do a very simple scarf pattern with it uh, and see how it all lines up and what pooling and what colour variation we get.
this is the finished scarf. It's um, 12 inches wide and 7 foot long, so it wraps around nicely. Um, you might have seen in the videos where I was uh, weaving that I kept having to put my hands in to separate the sheds, and that's because the little um, neps were getting caught in the, <laughs> in the heddle, which was a bit of a faff, but never mind. Um, so yes, once I'd hemmed it and cut it off the loom, I soaked it in some uh, warm water to see if it would shrink up, but it hasn't done much. Um, and then I left it to dry and block, and I've just trimmed the ends so they're all nice and even now. And that's pretty much ready to go. Oh, I, I trimmed the loose ends from where I'd uh, changed shuttles and things. So that's done. It's looking a lot paler out here than it does in uh, real life. But it's nice to see how the um, colours have mingled. Oh, I forgot to mention when I was speaking earlier that um, Weft used just over 200 metres of um, yarn. So all in all, we're looking at just over 600 metres because it was 400 metres for the warp and just over 200 for the weft. Right, lessons I learned on this project. Number one. Use the appropriate size dent heddle <laughs> for the project. Um, I said when I was warping the loom that the 12.5 dent rigid heddle was possibly a little bit too small for the fingering weight wool that I was using anyway. But with the neps as well, it, it just made the whole process a little bit more complicated because the neps would get stuck in the eyes um, or between the, the, the dents. I don't know the little slots in between um, so it meant that it slowed down the whole process because I was having to constantly go manually separate the sheds or ensure that the sheds had separated manually on top of moving the heddle up and down um, and I didn't always manage that perfectly which meant there was a couple of occasions at least where I had to uh, unweave my work to fix mistakes where um, I'd missed uh, warps um, when I was uh, separating the sheds so there was a couple in the final project that I hadn't managed to catch um, as I was weaving but luckily there were quite small ones that weren't really that noticeable other than to me <laughs> I don't think my mum will notice them um, but yes so that was one one thing uh, use the I, I would have been better with a ten dent uh, heddle I think for that particular wool. Um, second, uh, <laughs> second learning point: uh, vinegar smells and continues to smell for a long time. Um, yeah, so it didn't. The project didn't stop smelling of vinegar until after I'd soaked it in <laughs> very smelly conditioner uh, after I'd finished weaving the scarf. Um, otherwise, I think my mum would be <laughs> constantly craving fish and chips from the smell um, of the project. Never mind. Um, I did also get a bit of colour bleed when I rinsed the finished project. Now, theoretically, the wool should have been colour fast um, because the water had run clear when I was, was dyeing it. So the water that would come out... Um, in the bowl at, at the end of the dyeing process had run clear but still when I soaked it after I'd finished weaving some of the darker blue particularly uh, ran off so it was slightly paler um, in the finished product than uh, it was when I was weaving it. Now it might just be that I should have put it in the um, microwave for a couple more minutes um, whilst I was setting the colour or I might just have been better off rinsing it a bit more thoroughly after I'd taken it out 
of the microwave. Um, but you live and you learn. Uh, so that was my second learning point. And the third learning point, I don't think there is one. Um, yes, I could probably have done better at getting the even um, tassels on both ends. Because of how I tensioned my warp to begin with, um, the length of the, the warp on the sort of beginning end was very uneven um, which meant that I had to cut off quite a lot to get an even edge um, so the tassels were possibly a little bit shorter than I would have liked at the end of the scarf but that's it um, yeah I was really pleased with the project and uh, hopefully you think it looks okay too I know my mum will love it so that's all right um, and yeah I, I think I've got just about the right length um, for a scarf seven foot sounded so long like ridiculously long but then when you fold it in half and uh, wrap it around your neck it's like oh actually no that, that that's about right <laughs> so I now know where to position the loom uh, in comparison to the end of the table for uh, getting the perfect length for a scarf um, yeah I just need to decide on my next weaving project now all right then bye bye